The cosine law is another tool that you can use to determine lengths and sides in triangles. Triangles are usually labeled with capital letters for the angles and lowercase letters for the sides. The cosine law starts out looking like the Pythagorean theorem, but because it's not a right triangle, you have to tack on this last part. So the cosine law is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times cosine of c. Remember, the letters that we're using are just arbitrary labels. The key is to remember that this side length that you're solving for and this angle that you're taking the cosine of, those are opposites. So you don't have to solve for side C. You can solve for any side as long as you're using the angle that it's opposite to. You can also rearrange the cosine law to solve for an angle. If you do your algebra correctly, you should end up with this. This is also the cosine law. It's just been rearranged. And remember, the labels don't really matter. What matters is that this angle that you're solving for and this side right here that you're subtracting in the numerator, those are opposites. I'll go through two examples using the cosine law. In this example, we're asked to solve for the length of c, which is right here. I always start by setting up a chart showing all of my angles and all of my sides. I plug in what I know, and I can see that I don't have a complete set of an angle with its side, so I can't use the sine law. That's how I know that I'm going to use the cosine law. I'm asked to solve for side C, so that's the side I want to solve in my cosine law. Now I plug in the values that I know, and now I can plug that into my calculator. And remember to take the square root to solve. Once I do that, I get my final answer, C is 22.5 centimeters approximately. In this example, we're going to use the cosine law to solve for an angle. I set up my chart. I fill in what I know. And I notice that I don't have a complete set of an angle with a side, so I can't use the sine law. I have to use the cosine law. And this is how I wrote the cosine law before. But I'm not trying to find angle C. I want to find angle A. So in this formula, I'm going to swap A and C. So this C becomes an A. This C becomes an A. And this A down here and this A up here become C's. And now I can plug in the values I know and solve for angle A. Once I get to this point, I have to realize that I need to take the inverse cosine in order to solve for angle A. When I do that, I get an answer of approximately 44 degrees for A.